Hi everyone, Gina Aliotti here. I am so excited to bring on superstar plank record holder, George Hood. I'm gonna let some people sign on before we bring George on. Let some people sign on before we bring George on. So excited to have George here with us. How is everyone doing today? It's a Monday, no better way than to kick off the day than to have George. Hi Danica. No better way to kick off the day than to have such an inspiration come to our my Facebook Live today. I'm honored to bring George Hood on, just waiting for him to get on so we can talk all about George, his experience planking. I have some great questions for him. And um, yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm really excited to have him here. George and I go way back. He's actually been planking in my hometown, um, Carlsbad, and then he moved. And so things just aren't the same. I go to the beach now and he's he's no longer there. I, I kind of depended on that plank to get me through my 30 minute walk and then I'd come back and he'd be my inspiration. He'd be planking when I left and he'd be planking when I was walking back. And um, he's such an inspiration. We miss him dearly here in Carlsbad, but he's done some amazing things. And um, I see George just joined. Hi, George. All right, I'm going to add George in. And um, as you guys know, I do uh, monthly challenges. And my next monthly challenge is, um, the, is I'm doing a plank challenge. And it's Tabata, so it's only four minutes. Who are we? We should be doing... More than that, right? No, but you gotta start somewhere. And so I'm gonna bring George on. I thought he'd be the perfect way to kind of kick off the challenge, get things going. So let me see here. I'm gonna invite George in here and let's talk to George Hood and get him on board. Here he is. So excited to bring on George Hood. He's gonna tell us all about his story, his motivation, what gets him going, what his why, all that kind of stuff. There he is, hi George. There you are. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. I was just saying how much we miss you. Um, I know. I heard that. I, 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 your, your kind words mean a lot. I, I do miss being out there, and uh, that was one of my favorite training locations out there for the longest time. Well, for the better part of four years or so, but uh, it's okay. It's so awesome. <laughs> I'd see you planking, and I'd go for a walk with my kids down, down by the water, about 30-minute walk. And then we'd walk back and you'd be in that same position. <laughs> and to think that you do that for 10, 13, 14, 20 hours on end. So George, your current record right now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's when I, when you left Carlsbad, it was nine hours, 15 minutes and 15 seconds. When you no, left. No, we, no, we, the previous record that I had was nine eleven oh one. Oh, nine that, eleven oh one. Okay. That's the one we set in San Diego uh, almost two years ago on November 11th. Uh, that huge event on the Midway in San Diego Harbor with NBC. That was that was a good one, and that that meant a lot. And we repositioned that record um, with prejudice uh, on this last event we did in June when we did the two world records in 24 hours and moved that new world record, an international world record, to 10 hours, 10 minutes, and 10 seconds. And we retired the 9-11. Wow. So you, so you improved that 9-11 to over 10 hours, 10 minutes, yeah. and 10 seconds? Yeah. That and that, is that, unbelievable. Yeah, that was, that was in the margin. That was within my margins for subsequent attempts when I do them as far as where I think I might end up. So I was okay. It pushed the envelope a little bit. But uh, that was the that was just the first set in what ended up being a new record category, the uh, most plank hours accumulated in a 24-hour period. So that was set one, obviously. And I did 12 additional sets to rack up a total of 18 hours, 10 minutes, and 10 seconds, which is the first of its kind ever world record for the most plank time accumulated in 24 hours. Wow. That is unbelievable. So how long were those sets after you hit that record? Um, the first break was about the rules where you could break whenever you wanted. Um, plank rules still remain in effect. The first break was about 52 minutes and then we moved on. Um, and I averaged probably 45 minutes to an hour, um, plank and with about a 15, 20 minute break in between each one. But it was the relentlessness of it, of going through the night, um, hour after hour, you know, 
you know, we were playing to a dry hole for the most part because not many people come out at two in the morning to, to, to see you <laughs> at the YMCA. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll kind of get into the motivation, <laughs> but I remember that was so awesome when you, we would walk by and, you know, you really depend on those people to keep you going. And, you know, like when people yeah. come by and they root for you and I remember talking to you and we'd have long conversations and I was like, can we, is this cool? Like, am I taking you out of your zone? And you're like, yeah. no, truly it helps me to keep that time that goes by faster when I'm talking to people, interacting and there's people around. Yeah, that's, that's huge. That's a huge, that there's a lot of energy that's transferred there between people, especially familiar people that come by and can chat with me and preoccupy me with other things um, on the cognitive side of the house that, that help me, you know, sustain um, even a simple training plank that's going to be an hour or more or during the course of a main event. That is insane. So, George, now, why the plank? What got you started in planking? It's the, uh, it, it's the best exercise I've ever come across um, okay. as far as giving me the look that I want. Okay, let's face it. Every morning we get up, we stand in front of that mirror, and we have this discussion with ourselves, and um, we either like what, the way we look or we don't. It's just that simple. And I, I convey that to people that I, that I train. I, I'm just frank with them. And um, uh, quite frankly, um, I started doing the plank uh, because it, it, it gave me the look that I had always wanted. So now, you know, and I often, that was often validated on numerous runs that I would do down in Carlsbad from people who, who I didn't even know who would stop me and say, you're the plank guy, right? And I said, sure. And then they would say the nicest things to me. And that was always a pattern. And it happened even as recently as yesterday at the fitness center at my complex here. So, so I like the plank. It's a total body. It's, it's a functional fitness exercise. You can do any. But everybody does the plank. Not everybody rides a spin bike, but everybody does the plank. <laughs> okay. So it, it works for me and it appeals to a lot of people. Um, and then it was in uh, late 2010 that Guinness World Records made it a standalone category. And I found out from a client of mine out there, um, or back here actually, uh, that Guinness had made it a, a separate category. It was a standalone category. So uh, by contrast, the first Guinness World Record set for the plank was in the UK by a gentleman who uh, was raising money for the Cancer Society in the UK. Nice guy, probably our age. Um, he set the first record at 19 minutes and 58 seconds. Wow. <laughs> and then, and then it, it changed hands. That's when I found out about it. So it, it started to change hands quite a bit there in early 2011. So I started training for it. My first plank. Yeah. Here, what was the first plank time? My first plank that I ever did to see if I could even think about doing this was five minutes. I, love and I had a guy next to me at the gym, look at me and said, what the hell are you doing? I said, I just just tried to do a plank. <laughs> and, uh, so I said, you know, I could probably train for this. And that's when I realized it was a discovery. It was a journey that I took that, that showed me many things that I had to learn. On was my it a own. hard five minutes, George? I mean, now looking back, you're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea what uh, hard really was. That's, that's five minutes. And then I remember, I remember it shaking and, you know, uh, all that stuff you go through, you know, and then you start learning what parts of the body you have to work in order to get better at it. So I just started doing it over and over and, and just started to get good. Uh, and then, that, that's the key. It's just practice over and over and over. I mean, you said it perfectly. People want it that fast. They want to be able to plank or do you something. Have to you, can, you can train that body of yours to do just about anything you want, whether it be a world record for the wall squat. That's a subject for another day. If you want to set the most push-ups in, in one hour, and that's certainly a discussion for another day. I'm looking at that one. <laughs> that um, that awesome. you, you can train your body to do just about anything you want through training, practice, mental conditioning, and focus on the objective. I'll be honest with you. My training now has gone from eight hours a day down to about four. I've cut everything in half about 50%. Wow. And, um, and you know, and now I, I wonder, I look back now and wonder how the hell I ever got to 30 hours a week average over the last 17 months before the June event, uh, 40 hour weeks. Planks, plank hours, 45. My best was 45 plank hours in a week back in April. I don't know how I did it, but That's I had crazy. people tell me because I, I had a goal. I had a goal. I had something to shoot for. Now there's no goal. So and now I just train. And that's exactly why I do my challenges because having those goals, just like when I was competing, 
it keeps you on track versus just saying, oh, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to do this or that. If you have a solid goal to commit to, then it's like, you don't, there's no excuses. You just follow through, you have a goal and, and, and it, it keeps you on track. Yes. That's that. I, I've learned that. I've had some uh, crew people of mine that I, that I work with now reiterate that to me. And that's because I've asked that myself, that question, there's something wrong with me. No, I don't have a goal to train for right now. So I just have to maintain. And so I'm kind of having fun with that because it's nice to get up in the morning now and go walk the dog around the complex as opposed to getting up, you know, not taking him for a walk and getting on that stupid platform of mine, you know? Yeah. And that's why it's funny you mentioned that too, because I have different like seasons of my training as well. You know, they kind of come in, in season. So as when you're training for summer, it's one thing. And then when, during the winter time, I kind of call it more of like a maintenance season. You know, there's different mm -hmm. seasons where you have that, that fire is kind of, is, is sparked a little bit more than during other times of the year. So it doesn't mean that we kick back and do nothing, but you just embrace it for what it is. And you just take on maybe, you know, a less, less of a challenge or you ease back a little bit, you enjoy it, but you, you don't, you don't ever stop. So you don't, even during your downtimes, you're still planking, right? Just maybe not oh, as yeah. much. Yeah, not, not as much, but I, but I enjoy that. I, I in the plank training club that we have on Facebook, and I, I encourage your folks to, you know, share that link. If you want to become involved with a good group of people who are taking this vision of mine to the next level, join that plank training club on Facebook. Um, my partner a Angie Engstrom, she's very good at this. She's very high speed, um, and again, same peer group. We're all we're all in this together. But um, they're they're getting into the plank, and they're 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 enjoying it. And I'd encourage people to get there and try to play along with them and, and learn the plank in, in, in a very safe environment. Um, yeah, safe environment. I love that. So, uh, okay, a couple questions, George. Um, first of all, have you any funny plank stories? Like, okay, you're sitting on that platform for a really long time, right? So I'm just imagining, like, I'm hearing birds. Like, have you ever had, like, a bird come land on you, crap on you? I mean, like, do you have any – what's your funniest plank story? I don't have one because I take it, because I take it very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you have one, like a baby crawl on your back. That's a lot of hours for something to have happened. I don't know. No, I, I actually, I had I had some I had a malfunction with my uh, my uh, catheter tube that I use. You know, on when I'm planking long, you know, uh, the damn thing became disconnected during one of the training planks we did here. And uh, while it wasn't really funny, I looked at the coach, the the one part of my guy, my crew. I said. We're gonna to have to start empty the pans. I'm I'm just gonna go if I have to go. So you know I appreciate that, and and that that works. But you know, for the most part, it's so it's such it's such an individual effort. There's it's not really uh, um, nothing really makes me laugh or or that I can think. I just because it's so damn serious. I have to stay in the moment. I really Yourself. do. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I start joking around and and and, and I take things because I, I I waste energy. And I have to harness yeah. every bit that I can from that platform. That's, I love that. That's very true. So now, what do you do, like, when you're in that moment, like you said, you're harnessing all that energy, and there's obviously got to be times when you just want to stop. You want to let go. You want to quit. What, what no. gets you through those moments? How, what do you tell yourself? How, how do you dig deep within yourself to gain that, that, that in motivation to keep going? Training, uh, self-discipline, you know, when you're under duress, your body will give you just about every reason. Your head will give you every reason to want to stop. Yeah. You know, you can talk yourself out just out of just about anything you want. Okay. Um, and you have to be careful of that because that can be a toxic situation. Um, so I have to stay very focused on my ending line, my goal, where I want to get to and, um, and stay in the moment, stay in the present um, to get to where you need to be. Um, it's, it, it's a process. You have to learn this because we can get bored pretty quick. Um, especially yeah. when you're in a very, when you're in a static pose and, you know, so it helps to have friends around people, but you, you just, you just, you don't want to talk yourself out of it. it. It's very easy. It can happen very, very easily. You know, I've had, I've cut plank days short when I just, I'll go to 30 minutes instead of the hour that I anticipated or wanted to do. I, I got to go. I, I can't do this anymore. You know, it's, it's, I, I've, I've run low at times too, you know? So what do you tell yourself on those days that you set out in the morning to go do your hour plank and you just, you just are not feeling it. We all have those days. What do you do? Do you just say, suck it up? Do you, what's your mantra? I'm big on mantras and little things, triggers that keep you, get you out of bed and make you do it. Yeah. I try to, um, 
think about what I'm going to do for the day or, or something like that. But sometimes I get up there, especially when I was training and my elbows were taking a beating. Um, the mat just wouldn't get comfortable for me. It wouldn't lay right. Um, you know, and so I'd have issues with that. And um, I would have to just, and sometimes the elbows were just so sore. I couldn't get comfortable and I would just stop. I would just cut it short. And but then I always came back at night with a, with a stronger set and seemed to do really well. So, and that's back when I was putting in, you know, five to six hours of plank time a day in no more than three sets. Um, so, so you really listen to your body. Hmm? You really listen to your body. It sounds like. Well, you have to, you're in tune with it, your body from head to toe. I mean, th th this is the, the one thing about the plank is it's the best uh, total body conditioning exercise you could ever do. Trust me. I love um, it. Provided you do all the other corresponding exercises uh, that support the plank and facilitate plank success, i.e. the push-ups, your leg lifts, your squats, um, your crunches, certainly. And I do those obviously in, in excess. Um, but you're all familiar with those functional exercises. And that, that's what we're getting back to. You know, this is why the plank is good. This is what Doris, we're talking about. I love, I love this conversation because, you know, I don't go to a gym. And I truly right. believe that you can get in the most phenomenal shape with no gym. It doesn't take a lot. Like you said, it's getting back to those functional exercises. It's your push-ups, your sit-ups, your crunches, your planks, your squats. You know, we do the squat yeah. challenge every summer. And um, if you really focus on those functional exercises, as you said, the plank and these other exercises have allowed you to maintain that look that you like in your body. And not Absolutely. only that, but core strength. And, yes. you know, we'll get into that. So tell me a little bit more about, like, you said the plank, it helps you get into the best shape that you like to look. Now, what about, like, on a deeper level, that core stability and everything stems from the core? So what are the other health benefits of the plank? You got to remember, everything has a core. Even an apple has a core. And that core generates a very beautiful piece of fruit that you probably enjoy as you're driving down the road and then you take that core when you're done and you toss it out the window, right? Well, you, the body is the same way. This is the most important part of your total being from head to toe. There is an energy source, and this is getting into the yoga genre a bit, but there is an energy source that is vested here in the core, okay? That core, when you're in the plank pose, resonates from the earth, okay? There is a core in the center of this earth of ours that radiates and generates energy that I often will feel during the course of an extended plank. Um, and these are all subjects that I can certainly, that I lecture on. Um, I love I just, this. I just whet your appetite now, but there's more to this plank than just being on a platform and struggling and trying to get it done. It, you have to appreciate where that energy is coming from because it really is an energy source that you end up transmitting from the, from the pose if you're on a platform, that energy goes out to the people that are watching you, and it will bring many of them to tears. If you doubt that for a minute, just look at some of the video from China from 2014 and 2016. It, it grabs you, and um, that's what it does. And so, so the, the, the core, it, it, it's, it, this is the, mo that's the most important. From that, from that core strength, you, you'll walk better, you'll feel better, you'll look better. Um, Damn, and, and taller, yeah, and taller, yeah. posture's better. <laughs> We get away from that, and and then you start, you know, doing some of the the the, the yoga poses. <laughs> I was doing for years, just never knew they were yoga poses. Um, so uh, you can get the body you're looking for and, and stay fit and healthy. And you don't need to belong to a gym. I, I don't go to a gym. I work at a gym as their fitness director. But you don't need to be in a gym. You can do it in your house. You can do it at the park. You, wherever you want to be, as long as you get your stuff done. Um, and I'm good Until with it. Until it's done, you just get your. I love it. We're speaking the same language, George. And the best part is to get in the most phenomenal shape ever. And it just takes that daily consistency, getting the job done until, you know, until, until your goal is met. And um, yeah, getting back to those functional, um, you know, the, the functional training, which I think we are kind of coming back to and, and less injuries are involved when you really can focus on that core. Um, are, how are you, how are you, are you in pain at all, George? I know probably I would imagine your elbows and where, do you have any injuries? Yeah, there's, there's duress associated with the plank pose, especially when you go long and, you know, your body's getting, it, it, there's a training uh, period you go through where your body gets used to that discomfort, but um, it's not, the, the thing is when people complain about, you know, being sore or it's, it, I always, it, as long as it's not debilitating, 
and you're still able to function, then you're then that soreness is good. I mean that 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 energy that gets goes through your body, we call it lactic acid, okay? Or that burn that you talk about. That's that's energy. Okay, that that's energy. Um and you have every right to feel sore, if you will, but it's not debilitating. So you're going to be just fine and you live with it and you, you train to that and you, you learn to put your body through that. But uh, no, I'm real. I'm, I'm pain free. I'm injury free. I've been blanking now for what, seven years. I took it from five minutes to 10 hours and 10 minutes and 10 seconds in seven years. I mean, you, George, I see you walking around. I mean, not anymore, sadly, but he is in the most phenomenal shape. He, 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 amazing the way you stand like you've got that glow about you you don't look like you've been planking for hours and losing sleep and hallucinating <laughs> you look well rested obviously your nutrition plays a big role in this as well so what is your nutrition like how do you how do you train for this how do you eat um, I'm, I'm i've got rid of the of like everybody else i've got rid of the uh the, the sugars the whites the white flour the bread i always tell people i haven't had a sandwich in years but um you know, it's uh, things like that. Um, I keep it simple and try to eat healthy, much healthier now than I did, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, um, just by eliminating certain things uh, that just weren't good for me. The whole processed food, uh, yeah, we, we can cheat every now and then, but uh, I just reduced all that, uh, the consumption of that stuff. And lately, my thing is now I've been kind of weaning myself off of meat to a certain extent. I, mean, I like salmon like everybody else, right? But uh, I just don't eat it as much now. And I'm finding other alternatives. Uh, I see so what do, you, feel what do you eat the morning before your training? And then you mentioned um, a couple things. As you mentioned that you had a catheter when you have those long training. So a couple things. What do you eat before you, you do your plank? And what's, what's your breakfast? Do you, is it something light that sits in your tummy? And then also do you eat throughout your plank? Yeah. And obviously you don't go to the bathroom while you have the catheter. So what does that look like? Mm -hmm. No, I, I just, uh, um, I get up in the morning and it takes from the time I wake up until the time I'm on my platform, it's about an hour goes by. I have to let an hour go by, let that coffee go through me, whatever um, snack I might have. I don't eat a full breakfast. I don't eat breakfast until about 11 o'clock in the morning. I'll be eating breakfast after I get done with you here. Um, but I eat late. That's just a habit. And, uh, but I, I go into the plank pose on an empty stomach. Okay. As empty as can be. But the key is you have to stay hydrated. Um, you have to drink uh, water. Um, yeah. And now the, the new thing is it used to be eight cups a day, right? Not anymore. Now it's what, 50% of your body weight. That's the new, that's yeah, the new. I, I, I so now, I, now, I gotta drink, now I got to drink 10 cups of water a day. Now how the hell do I find 10 cups of water? I mean, you can only drink so much water. It carries many bottles around. But uh, it's, it's kind of funny in a way. But, you, but you gotta, you've got to keep the body hydrated. Um, but the diet how is simple, you, 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 know, huh? how do you stay hydrated while you're planking? Do you have, how do you, how does that happen? Well, when I'm by myself, I know how long I can go before I, I start hydrated. Cause I know I can, I can go to the bathroom whenever I want, even at home, you know, and that's just my training techniques. Right. But, um, during an event, uh, the, the crew feeds me water that's laced with, you know, certain supplements that keep me, you know, strong, healthy. And those are all brand names that are out there. You know, but um, I've, I've, I've used your devo devotion nutrition. I, when I need a protein powder, I, I go to devotion. I drink my shakes, you know, and mix those up and, you know, have those night from I'm going to yeah, hey, have to get you uh, some new shirts until it's done. It's perfect for you because that's the whole point, right? You're going to be planking until it's done. <laughs> yeah. um, so w as we, throughout my challenge, I'm going to be giving everyone like different plank variations. So every day for 30 days, I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating a new plank variation, everything from the basic plank to a side plank to all different, you know, there's so many different types of planks. When you train, do you focus solely on the basic, not the basic, I don't mean basic, meaning not, you know. Yeah, the forearm plank is where you want to start. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So you, you? when you train. Yeah, you train. That's what we're going to start on day one is the forearm plank. So when you train, do you do any other variations or do you kind of strictly focus on the forearm plank? Yeah, um, I had a brief disconnect there, but I think we're back. So yeah, the forearm plank is where I start with folks. Uh, there are some, there's all, some alternatives to the plank. You get the forearm plank down first, and then we'll talk about the side plank and the proper execution of that. We'll talk about another alternative uh, for the plank that I'm having success with, uh, thanks to my, my Canadian friend up north. Um, she has found tremendous success with the high plank. 
which is a yoga pose. Oh, really? my plank. Yeah, it very is. cool. So, um, if you're if you have the hand strength, I mean, I mean, um, so so that will uh, uh, that's a, that's a nice alternative, the, the high plank, and that counts as plank time in my book. Okay, high plank, low plank, uh, those are all that all counts as plank time, as far as I'm concerned, because you're still affecting the core. Yeah, no, I love it. And I like what you said about getting like, we got to build first, you got to start with the solid foundation and anything you do, even if it, it's squats, when what I'm doing the squat challenge, it's like first, you got to you got to have that solid foundation of the proper squat, the proper plank, how to get it engage the core really get that mind muscle connection that you talk about gaining that energy from the earth, that core energy, all of that. And then from there, you can start to add the layers on and improve and change and grow from yeah. there. But it really does stem from from that the foundation of that that basic forearm plank i love that george so um okay so what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given and then what is um some advice that you can give to my my vips anyone listening here that is going to join my my challenge or anyone that wants to try the plank the best advice I, i've been, ever been given and i often share it with many people is you know uh i ask nothing of anybody um that I myself have not done, been asked to do in the past, or that I'm not currently doing, okay? So in other words, I walk the walk and I also talk the talk. Very seldom can you find people that actually can do both. Um, I they fake it, make it, and Gina and I are in the same same peer group here, same, same community of, of pros that know what the hell we're talking about. Um, so, I'm here to tell you, be careful who you align yourself with out there um, and stay true to yourself. And, um, but that, that's the best advice I can give you. Stay true to yourself, stay committed to a goal, you know? And, and you can take this mantra of mine that I've, I've, I came up with back in 2007 when I set the second cycling record on the spin bike um, at uh, 111 hours, 11 minutes and 11 seconds. I, I know you were gonna ask. Um, but, Set goals, keep score, keep track, keep a record, okay? Because if it's not written down, you got to understand it never happened, okay? Um, keep score and break records. And whatever that is in your book or in your life, that could be another minute on your plank time. It could be um, you're going to read one more book to your child before he goes to bed tonight than you did last week. Um, you're going to be, you're going to strive to be a better uh, partner or girlfriend, wife, husband, wh whatever it might be. Uh, than perhaps you were a month ago. Um, so breaking records is, doesn't have to be one for the books, but it, it's always nice that it is. But in the fitness industry, that's what I strive for. That's what I do. So set goals, keep score, break records. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, at the end of the day, anything else is just exercise. I yeah. love it. And keep no, score. And, and it's uh, all about keeping score with yourself, right? It's being a better version of you. Okay, you I, I, I stay away from these terms. This, this is from George Hood. You're not going to hear it from anybody else because no, nobody else knows this except me. But I don't use the term working out anymore. If you're using the term working out around me, you might as well go stand out here in a cornfield or <laughs> in California, go stand on a beach somewhere and just look at the clouds and watch them move. Okay? They're, it's innocuous. It's vague. And people say they're going to the gym to work out. No, they're going to the gym to work out, meet somebody, Blah, blah, blah. Talk, talk, talk. Take selfies. Take selfies. <laughs> so I use the term um, training. I don't work out anymore. I train. Training implies, implies purpose and intent. Purpose. So get your head in that mindset. Wrap your arms around that and get serious. And then, uh, then, then we can train together. <laughs> I love I don't work purpose. Anymore. It's all about eating for purpose, training for purpose. I, I yeah. use that a lot, George. It's, it's funny how we're sp we speak the same language. When you find people that really get it and you just, you just connect on this different level. Um, are you there, George? I hope we didn't lose George. I hope we didn't lose George. We may have lost George. Are you with me, George? Oh, we may have lost George. Well, this was just about the end of, of the live. 
I was saying that it's just so cool when you find people that you can connect with and George was was truly speaking my language and um, I'm gonna see if I can get him on for for some some closure here um, hopefully he can join back on um, just so we can finish it up I love just the the final words from George maybe he's got some bad reception it's okay if we can't get him back on uh, there he is yeah. okay no I was just that I I had I had a call come in from my son so I it disrupted my my feed here so oh, we're good no, now I was I was just saying George like it's really cool when you meet people such as yourself like you're we're speaking the same language and it's just awesome you talked about a lot of the same words I use in my daily eating training for purpose you know the core yeah. stuff and how you, you mentioned the yoga stuff and how you really get that that energy from the earth and how you actually gain that energy through your training it's just, it's just really interesting. Walking the walk, talking the talk. That's what it's really all about. Surrounding yourself with positive people. And, yes, um, yes. and, and just helping to inspire people. And, and I got one of these quotes that I saw from you, George. This, I love this quote that you said, I just need to inspire one. One person, one reader, one club member. If I just inspire one to change their life without putting a hand on them, I've accomplished my goal. And I, That's I, it. I love it. That's what it's all about is, is helping somebody else to believe in themselves, to believe that they can plank, to, you know, to inspire them. I just love that quote, George. You know, everybody in your, everybody in your community, everybody in your, in your group, and the people that we, that come together here on the, on social, various social media platforms, whether it be Instagram or whatever, you know, we're all looking to connect with somebody. Okay. Sometimes that connection's for the wrong reasons, but from what I'm talking about is we want to, we do want to be with like-minded people who share a common goal, so, something, we want something in common with somebody. We don't, nobody likes to be alone, okay? And uh, that doesn't imply you're lonely, but nobody likes to be alone. Um, so there's a sense of community out there. Um, and I encourage those to, to seek out those kind of groups and, uh, and, and, and stay, stay in the game and, and, and enjoy those people because there's a lot of miserable people out there. There really are. There's a lot of obese people. There's a lot of people out there who, and um, we can help them do that. You can help them do that because you surround believe yourself themselves. with good people. Yeah. Absolutely. So make it, make it happen. No, and I, I think that, that 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 quote really resonated with me because I always ask anybody before they get started, what is your why? That's really important to me because I feel like so many people are doing things for the wrong reasons or they're doing things for other people. But if you really get down to the bare bones of why you're doing something, what is your why? Are you doing it? You know, and so that kind of summed up. So is, is, do you have another why other than inspiring other people? Like, what is your why, George? Is, is, it that, is it that to inspire others or is it something else? Because I can. And I will. Love it. Proven to yourself what you're capable of. Well, George is a busy guy. Apparently, he's probably got another call. Somebody else who's like, hey, George, can I interview you? Because you're so amazing. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much, George, for... You're just such an inspiring person. And um, if you guys don't know George, definitely should consider looking him up. George Hood, incredible man, heart, integrity. I mean, like I said, I, I've gotten to know him through my walking along Carl's Bad along the water there. And he's just such an inspiring person. And those moments when you think you can't dig deep, I often think of people like George who are holding that plank for over 10 hours a day. I did it this morning, actually, when I was swimming. And I was like, you know, out of breath and just trying to get to the end of the pool. And I was like, George, if he can do hold a plank for over 10 hours, I can do this 30 minute swim, Gina. You can do it. So using, you know, people like George as inspiration, if they can do it, you can do it too. And um, yeah, so thank you, George, for, for joining us today. He had some amazing words. And um, for those of you, check out my, uh, my challenges that I offer, as George mentioned, that it's having that goal and having that reason that you show up every single day, having that solid group of people that are in it with you, that understand, that support you, that are there to motivate you when you feel like you can't wake up or when you, when you feel like you can't do it after you wake up, just keeping you going. It's really important to have that network of people. So my plank challenge starts 
uh, on Thursday, which is November 1st. We're going to kick it off strong, focusing on what I love what George said. We're focusing on day one, the foundation of a plank how to really engage that core, how to really get that proper plank formation. And then from there, every day, inspiring you with a new plank variation. And the fun part is, is that we're gonna test on day one to see how long you can hold a plank. And if it's 10 seconds, that's perfectly fine. If it's two minutes, that's perfectly fine too. And at the end of the 30 days, I think you're gonna be surprised by how much longer you can hold that plank simply because you committed and every day you focus on that core stability. So thank you guys so much for joining me. You guys, most of you know me, Gene Aliotti here. If you have any questions, love to hear from you. Any questions at all, I'll be putting the link below to, to join the Plank Challenge. We kick it off on Thursday together. Um, I have an awesome group, VIP group, where, like I said, we're all in this together, and it's really about having that support, that accountability that keeps you digging deep and, and focusing on your goal. All right, you guys, have an amazing day. Happy Monday. Thanks again, George, for joining us. George Hood, be sure to look him up, and I'll post some information down below so you can, I'll save you guys the time. You can just click a couple of links and see how awesome he is and learn more about my plank challenge. Have a great day, everyone. See you real soon. Keep digging deep, and... Don't forget, do this for you. Circle back and always remember what is your why. And if you know what that why is, that just frees up everything else and allows you to dig a little bit deeper because you know why you're doing something. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.